Well, I thank you. I thought that would be later. Uh, so I waited for the expert comments. I'm, I'm very glad that I'm encircled by good friends and people who know the issue uh, better than I do because they have committed their lives in dealing with the issue. But definitely uh, immigration, although it's not, I believe, in an alarming numbers in 2017, still it produces alarming political events. There is uh, widely uh, accepted that um, political effects of the immigration threat and the immigration politics have produced, have, uh, produced already effects. We are talking about Brexit, that definitely the Brexit campaign relied on the immigration issue in great part. Election of Donald Trump as the President of the United States. And uh, still in the rest of the European countries, we see a, an incredible increase in the xenophobic and uh, uh, racist movements. And we can see the polls in the forthcoming elections, uh, both in uh, uh, Holland and in France. Uh, the anti-immigration and racist uh, speech to gain more willing ears. Why this is happening and this is, should puzzle us? I think this has to do with the way we have faced and dealt with immigration so far. We really focused on the humanitarian aspect of the crisis and we didn't, at the same time, dealt with the security concerns that had to do with this crisis. Greece has played a tremendous role on that, especially during 2015. If you see the flows in the Mediterranean, you can see that while Italy maintains a constant flow around uh, from 120,000 to 160,000 people arriving in Italy each year for the last four years. In Greece, we have seen an increase from 35,000 up to 800,050. And then only after the uh, joint statement of Turkey and the uh, European Union, we have seen a decrease uh, to the numbers uh, equivalent to Italy, around 170,000. What has happened in 2015? We have implemented an open border policy. We actually said to everybody that you are welcome in Greece and that we, you have an, uh, an ideal country where you can enter easily and you can go out of the country also easily and go wherever in Europe you want with a minimum security check, with a minimum stay, and with, uh, let's say, safe passage because uh, the distance between the Turkish coast and the Greek islands, it's like three, four nautical miles maximum, uh, mainly with calm seas. So with a minimum danger for the loss of life. This has produced definitely a reaction from the countries of Visegrad that also led to split, to a split in uh, the European Union. Almost, European Union almost uh, uh, came close to, to a breakup back in October of 2015, where each country uh, developed its own policy and uh, definitely the anti-immigration and uh, hate speech had uh, gained a lot of support and a lot of uh, willing ears. How we can deal from now on, because I don't think that we have dealt so far the best way. The first thing is that we have to, to say and send a message clearly to everybody who is willing to relocate himself in Europe that Europe is not an open space. 
that we don't have a mandate, both at the European or at the national level, to implement an open border policy. And therefore, we have to take uh, into account and use every fund there is available to us in order to safeguard our borders. I think that it's completely false what, is, what has been the debate towards uh, the control of uh, illegal immigration, that either you sink a boat with immigrants, so you produce a heavy loss of life, or you have to accept them. There are certain levels and mechanisms to deal with that without sinking any boat and without causing any loss of life. I'm not talking to implement uh, the Australian policy towards immigration that says you are not welcome, you will not enter, your boat is going to be uh, damaged, and, why, and if you survive out of this, you are going to be uh, placed in an island, isolated from Australia, uh, remote, and you will never get an entry to Australia. No, we are not talking about this. We are talking about a consistent security policy that has to do also with the security screening <coughs> for the people who are arriving in Europe. And I, I find that to be absolutely necessary. The second thing is that we have to realize that in 2017, we are not dealing with the refugee crisis anymore, but we are dealing with the uh, absolute immigration movement. The people who arrive at the Greek islands, 50 to 100 a day, they are mainly males, young males, coming into Europe in order to find a better living and a better job. They are not coming from Syria, they are coming from sub-Saharan countries, they are coming from other countries of Asia, but definitely the refugee profile for what uh, we understand there is a refugee uh, uh, within the European uh, framework. It's not the same way that we are dealing with the refugees with the United Nations. It's a different approach that we are having to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, they are absolutely migrants. The third thing that we have to do within Greece is to realize two things. First of all, that we are going to deal with this problem for many years to come. It's not over. We are going to face constant flows that have nothing to do uh, with Turkey. Turkey has been a reliable ally in that case. And I don't believe that Turkey will play, because of its uh, internal political turbulence, will play the card of uh, blackmailing European Union through this, uh, through this issue. I think that Turkey has much more to gain by, first of all, using the European funds in dealing with that issue, because Turkey has already spent billions of, of dollars prior to the European help and the international help in dealing with that issue, and it has dealt uh, um, substantially good. And uh, on the other hand, I think that um, if we analyze Erdogan's policy and uh, rhetorics, uh, he's very glad to point the figure at the European Union and say, I'm doing what is my part, and you're not doing your part in our mutual agreement. Therefore, I don't believe that it's going to, uh, to fall this agreement. This agreement may fall, technically, only by the incompetence of the Greek authorities that haven't realized the two things that are, the, the second thing that I wanted to tell you, that we have two sets of immigrants in Greece. One set is the 15,000 people in the islands, and the other set is are the 50,000 uh, people on the mainland. We have to realize that 
the 50,000 people in the mainland are here to remain, and we have to deal with that issue. And the 15,000 on the islands are there in order to live. And we have to increase the pace of reviewing their petitions for asylum at a pace greater than the number of the inflow. And the inflow in the influx is going to increase in the forthcoming months because the better weather conditions, uh, the better sea conditions, uh, more ships at sea, uh, more boats, more yachts, this would facilitate definitely, and we will rise from the numbers of, of uh, January that are 100 per day, we are going to rise definitely to 200 or 300 per day during the summertime. This is normal, this happens every year, this is the trend. So we have definitely to go at a pace of more than 1,500 uh, reviews of uh, petitions at the sec first and second degree coming from the islands uh, immediately. Finally, what we have to do and we are not doing. We have definitely to implement a policy that has been abolished. And this is a policy that I understand that many NGOs do not like, but definitely it's the only policy that we can deal with this issue, is the policy of the closed camps. We can't have open facilities, hosting facilities on the islands. Everybody who has arrived on the island while he or she's petition is being reviewed, cannot be free. We have to shorten the time of the review at the minimum possible, but at the same time, we have to understand and realize that entry, legal entry in the European Union, it's not an easy process either a refugee or a migrant. Finally, and I'm, I wanted to, to, to say one thing that has to do with the European Union and with the review of the Dublin Treaty, because there is a discussion about the review of the Dublin Treaty. Dublin Treaty has been very punitive for the countries of first reception. And while being punitive, the Dublin Treaty itself, in the meantime, the relocation scheme has produced minimum results. Only 11,000 people have been relocated from uh, Greece, and, uh, Tur uh, Greece and Italy altogether uh, last year. And it's actually a disgraceful number. Uh, and in the same time, uh, there is a lack of coordination at the European level of a magnitude unprecedented. There is no European agency or uh, another NGO that work on the issue that has been funded from the European Union that actually uh, know the one what is the other doing. We need the money, a lot of money uh, have been given emer through emergency funds especially uh, in dealing with this issue. The money should be well spent. And I don't think that we are spending the money in the right direction by facing the realities. We try always to be one uh, step behind. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to take any more of your time. I'm very glad to, to comment or on the remarks that, that will be made after. Thank you.